Hi friends. So today I'm painting this fun little fall um, kind of composition. It's going to be in this C composition. I'm not sure if you can see this well enough. Um, and it's a little bit of that radial composition, which I love where a lot of the focus is in the center and then it kind of spreads out around it. So that's what we're going to be doing today. As far as my supplies, I'm going to use my Princeton round number eight and this Princeton round, actually this one's heritage number 12. So those are the two brushes I'll be playing with. I've got my two containers of water with, as you know, my favorite little water dish from Meaden. Never have to worry about it dumping over. I love it. And one side is to wash, one side is to rinse. Very important in watercolors. And then I'm using, because I'm out of my Artisto small pads, I'm using their larger pads, which I'm really loving. These are the 9x12, 140 pound, 300 GSM. Really, really like those. And I'll list that for you. And uh, many of you have asked me about this little palette too. It's also Meaden. I just love their ceramic supplies. So that's what I'm using today. Lots, three big wells. I can hold it in my hand, love it. And my My Lane palette. As you know, I love Windsor Newton, but can't, uh, it's not, um, affordable for me to paint with those every day so I'm using these my langs which I love really good quality beautiful colors very creamy love them all right so let's get started so I have these leaves coming out I have a few acorns in the middle if you would like I did a tutorial the other day on how to draw these leaves um, which you all seem to enjoy so you can go back to that and watch that or I did make a kit from this with the drawing, color swatch, all that kind of fun stuff. You can download that. Um, they're five dollars on Etsy. Thank you so much for those of you that have been buying those. They help me as well. Okay, so let's start with um, some of these leaves in the middle and I'm going to be using this yellow ochre, which is the same in Windsor Newton or My Lang. Let's just, as always, we start with the lighter wash and we can always get darker. So I've got about, oh, I'd say 50-50 water and pigment. And we're going to, I'm going to coat some of uh, these leaves with that glaze first. So a very light wash, a very light value of paint of that yellow ochre. And as always, I keep just a little sheet here that I can kind of practice my values. So this would be a pretty light value. This would be a very dark value to make that middle one actually like a mid value. And then we'd have our lightest value. And always trying to incorporate all those different values into your paintings is gonna really help you create a lot of depth and interest. Um, that's typically the mistake I see more beginners try is they'll use all the same value. And you wanna try to use different values. I typically will do a swatch like this and then while I'm painting, I'm making sure I'm adding in all those different values. It just creates so much more interest and depth for you. Um, because I'm working wet and wet, I wanna have a lot of my paints kind of done ahead of time. So I'm also going to use like a burnt sienna, burnt umber, one of your darker browns. So I'm gonna get that ready in my palette. And that I will use for these little chestnuts. I'm going to use a sap olive green. So I will get that ready in my palette. That way, if you're working wet and wet, you don't want to stop. And by the time you'd mix your color and come back, it would be dry. So you're no longer working wet and wet. And I really want to work 
um, with a lot of these washi type colors for this. So as you can see that consistency in my palette, the paints are flowing very easily. That's what I want. The dark, not so much. So I might just add a little bit more water to that. And there you go. I've also got my paper towel here so I can tap off my paints if I like, just to make sure I don't have too much water in my brush. And I've got some salt here too that I'm gonna use on the leaves for some fun effects. So let's get started and just put a nice light wash glaze over our first leaf here. And I will have this drawn out for you in that kit. And then I'll give you a color swatch. I'll give you the original painting to kind of go over if you want to. So I did a light glaze. Now before that dries, I wanna go in and I'm actually going to pick up a little bit of rose matter and add that color into some of my leaves as well. You could even do a little bit of Prussian blue if you watched my tutorial the other day. That was really, really pretty. So I've got all these fun leaf type colors. So before that dries, I just wanna go in and now see what happened is I had my Prussian blue and my red. When I touched it down, it turned purple, which is fine. I'm not real worried about that, but as you can see, that's what can happen. So what you see me doing there is I'm rinsing off my brush and just kind of picking up some of the color if I don't like what I laid down. I actually quite like that. So I'm gonna leave that. I might add, let's get some orange in there too. So this is a cad orange. It's quite bright, so I'm gonna add a little bit of that gold in there. There we go, yeah, I like that. So we've got quite a big conglomeration of different colors there, which I'm okay with. I'm gonna let that dry just a tiny bit, and then I'll sprinkle some of that salt on there and go into my next leaf here, lay down that. Now I don't wanna to touch this one because otherwise they'll just kind of all blend together. And I just leave a few little white spaces here and there just for interest. Go in with a little bit of my brown here and there, maybe some green. You know, fall leaves have so many colors in them. You could really kind of go crazy. Okay, so before this dries, I'm just gonna grab a tiny little pinch. I'm using table salt, but rock salt is really nice as well. So I'm gonna let that dry, and when it dries, it's going to have this really beautiful bloom type effect. We'll go on to our next leaf. Just picking up some more of that gold. I'm really just using this gold. And, and again, I'm leaving white space here and there. So I'm not completely filling in every single little spot on my leaf because that white space is so interesting and unique. Maybe add in some orange, just tapping in wet on wet. Maybe a little bit of green here and there. Just have fun with this. The one thing I would be a little careful about is um, you wouldn't want to have all blue leaves over here and green over here. You'd want to, you know, kind of follow it around. So this has a little bit of that pinkish in it. So I'm just going to add some of that in here so that it doesn't just look like pinks right there and your eye stops. Okay. Now before this dries, I'll just add in the tiniest pinch of salt and this one too. And I'm really just letting the watercolors do their thing. 
So I'm not fussing with them too much. I'm just laying them down, throwing in that salt and kind of letting them do what they want to do. Okay, let's paint this big oak leaf right here. And I'm just going to grab a tiny bit more of that gold, water it down a bit, and let's just lay that down. Again, keeping some white space. And many times I'll tell you on my leaves, I leave the white space maybe where that center vein is and let that kind of dictate it versus drawing it in there. So that's one way I might determine where I'm leaving that white space. And this is quite wet. So see, I've got these these two white lines going down the center and those might just dictate where that center vein is. It's just go a lot of times at the edges of these beautiful oak leaves they will have like little burned spots and I always think that's pretty. Pick up a tiny bit of that pink just so we're incorporating that into some of our others leaves here. Maybe some of that orange. A little bit of green. Honestly, you can get so creative with the colors you use. I wouldn't fuss again too much with mixing them because if you fuss too much, you're going to mix them together. And if you're not careful, you're going to get kind of like a muddy type color. So just be careful. Like if I mix green and red, it's gonna turn muddy because they're opposites on your color wheel. And opposites always do that. Now, before this gets too dry, Look how pretty. I think that's so interesting. There you go. And before it gets too dry, I will go back and drop in just a little bit of that salt again. You can use a straw if you like, which my straw I have misplaced. So maybe I'll blow and that will help mix everything together. So see these beautiful little bursts that I'm getting with these leaves? Just put a little bit on here. I'm using very sparingly, actually. And there you go. Okay, let's just keep going. I might, um, no, we'll wait. I'm going to go in. I've got another leaf here, so just wetting my brush, not too much water, and going in with that light wash because we can always go darker. So more water per paint. And let's just, and by the way, I'm starting with my eight velvet touch here in case you're wondering what brush I'm using. I've actually really been having a lot of fun with um, that bigger brush but as you see just now I automatically grabbed my eight so you know it's habit I might try in a minute to use the other there we go just dabbing in like that Again, just having fun with these beautiful leaves. I see them in all kinds of colors. And there you go. Now, if I wanted, I could take the paint off my brush, dry it off, and create a line for the center vein. You could do that 
we could also, hmm, I don't have a credit card. Let me grab my um, palette knife one second. You may have seen me use this the other day. This came in that beautiful Zen art kit. Um, you know, I could just scratch in. Look at that. That's kind of fun. Just scratching in some of those. This is already kind of dry, so not gonna work so well. This one I might be able to. So you can kind of scratch in some of those little veins. Those are mostly dry, so not gonna work. But as you see here, I was able to do that. So I'm always playing with these type of things just to see what kind of effects and texture I can get. And now let's try and play with this 12 round. This is a heritage. This isn't the velvet touch. And I'm one thing I really love about these bigger size brushes is they have a really nice handle on them. And I, I like that. These are a little bit smaller. Um, these are a little bit bigger. And I kind of like that feel. So let's paint this leaf over here. And I'm going to make that one a little bit greener. So I'm just picking up, I mix my olive green and my sap green together. And these heritage brushes, um, making sure when you're loading your brush, you're not loading it up to the ferrule because that'll ruin your brushes. So I'm just gently swirling around in there. And then let's paint this leaf here. Point, press, point, press, something like that. Maybe go in there with a little bit of brown. There we go. Leaving some of that white space. And there you go. I'm gonna wash and rinse my brush and just pick up a little bit of that with a dry brush and maybe go in there with some orange or yellow would be really pretty and create something like that. There we go. Okay. So now we will go to this leaf over here and pardon my shadow here. I've got the sun on my back and it's kind of coming in here. I'm going to do this leaf here, pick up a little bit more of that sap and olive green which is in Windsor Newton or my Lang. I think actually in my Lang there's sap green is a tree green. And let's go in like that. Maybe over here, I just add in some little. So one of the things I notice when I use this brush is I really do get those beautiful points rather nicely. These little points here. And I love that about this brush. It's very wide strokes, but it has a nice point. And then I'm going to pick up a little bit of my cad yellow, mix it with that gold, a little bit of water, and then just gently scrape off my brush and go in and throw a little bit of that in there. I think that's really pretty. And there you go. So if you notice, I left that white space just to kind of identify that, oh, there's a center vein there. 
And then let's go in and, well, let's finish these leaves first. So point, press, just like that. Tapping in. And I'm gonna get a little darker value of those two. So I'll pick up more paint and not put in as much water. So my value is darker. Let me turn my painting here. Use a little bit of the side of my brush there, if you saw that. Something like that. And maybe while this is wet, I'll do that here too. Yeah, I, I really am enjoying this larger brush, honestly. And we'll go in here. Use the side of my brush and then up onto the point. Something like that. Just using that point. Go in, add a little bit of gold there while it's wet and just let that kind of blend and merge. And we'll go into some of these and um, add some darker values as well. I'm just adding in a little bit here, just for some interest. Okay, the other thing I'm going to add in is some of these little balls that I did a tutorial on yesterday because I thought they were so fun and I wanted to show you how I might incorporate them. So I'm gonna do a couple here and a couple here so getting that gold paint on my brush and we're just going to use the tip so very light pressure using the tip and just going to make these dots and create i already forgot the name of these billy something it sounded like these are pretty popular in australia and going to create that ball. So fun. Let's create another one here. So taking your time, and I say that as a reminder to me because sometimes I want to do what's quick and just do a swoosh to create a ball, but I think it's worth it to take your time with these. And then I'm gonna go in and pick up Maybe a tiny bit of, let's mix a tiny bit of cad orange with just a touch of that brown down around the bottom. Now you don't wanna to do too much and you don't wanna to have too much water. If you're not sure how much water you have, remember you can always tap off on your napkin and the extra water will come onto the napkin because we want to keep this beautiful white space. We don't want it just to be all filled in. So there we go. Then maybe on the bottom of this one, like that. These are so fun. I couldn't wait to mix them into and with um, an arrangement. They were so fun. Pick up some more of that yellow and gold. Now I have to be careful working on this side of the paper now because I might put my hand in it. So typically you really should work if you're right-handed from left to right. So you're not accidentally sticking your arm in your painting, which I do quite often to be honest and sorry for that camera shake. So we've got a couple more of these little balls here and there. Look how fun that is. I will link that video in here too for you that we drew these and we painted them. 
and you can kind of go back but basically you're seeing it right now and then let's pick up some of that brown maybe even mix it with some green and let's create this stem so very light touch just using the point of my brush and going in like that just like that uh, let's see here on all of these there you go and you could mix that with brown and green and now I'm going in and I just picked up a little bit of that brown it even has a tiny bit of the red which is fine because I like mixing the red with the other colors so it brings a coherency and it's not just like red right there red right there but I kind of mix it in so there's just these little undertones carried throughout the painting just creating some little shadows making sure I'm not filling it in too much so we have we're leaving that white space now I'm going a little heavy-handed so I'm getting a little bit larger dots than I might normally go for because I think it's nice to have some really small ones. There we go. Okay. So there's those beautiful little balls. I actually have one more painted here. Now I want to go in and I'm going to add some little berries, which I've done a tutorial on. These are all little filler fun flowers. I'm going to, sorry, that was a huge hammer shake because I just hit my head on my light. Grab some of that brown. And actually, I think I'm going to add a little bit of green to that. Ooh. That was too much. There we go. And I'm going to create these little branches. Again, very light pressure, holding my brush straight up and down. So I just am using that tip. Light, light pressure. This is where those warm ups that I have shared with you are so important. So you can get used to the amount of pressure to create thick and thin lines. And now I'll go in and just paint those red or a berry color. So washing and rinsing my brush and going into that beautiful red that we created here. Look how pretty that is. That's pretty vibrant. So I'm gonna add a little bit of water and then tap off my brush and go in and just, just create little circles here. The bigger ones you can leave a little bit. Just like that. I'm also gonna paint some of those and then I'll go in and draw the branch here and this is where you're going to want to play with those values as well you want some light values of berries some dark values of berries so a little bit more water in some than others There we go. Now wash and rinse my brush and go into that brown green. Tap off some of that water. And 
and let's draw those stems. Very light touch. And I'm not worried that it's going in and kind of mixing with that red. That's perfectly fine. I actually like that. And there you go. Very pretty. I like that. Wash and rinse my brush. And I think what I'll do, now this has salt on it. So before I can really paint on it, I need to brush away some of that salt. I don't like using my hand because um, it can smear. So I usually take a brush and let me grab my wash straight edge brush. This is a really old brush, you guys. I've had literally since college, which is decades ago. It's about ready to fall off, but I guess I'm got an attachment to it. Um, and now I just really use it for this. I just brush away. Now see, that was a little bit wet still, so oops. Look what I did there. So normally I would really let this dry and then come back in and do this, but because I don't know how to edit, I'm doing it now, and there you go. Okay, so now I can go in and maybe take my smaller little six round brush that I've shared with a lot of you. I really like it for detail, and I might just, let's do this first. Let's go back to that eight, and I'm gonna pick up some of these greens and don't get too picky about this and I'm just going to go in and kind of glaze over this is where I have so much fun with watercolors I'm just using the side of my brush going in there adding in some fun little lines Some fun little color variations using the side of my brush. Maybe some gold. Not getting too picky here, just laying some paint down and kind of letting it do its thing. And there you go. I think that's really pretty. And then the last thing we have here, now you could go in with this brush and create some more lines and detail. Not normally, oh goodness guys, sorry about that. Um, I've got a new light and haven't quite uh, gotten used to it being overhead and create some of these little lines again. If you wanted, you could do something like that. And now we've got these, I, I drew these little acorns in there. So I've got my, this is my eight brush. And just going to keep those white spaces. Kind of fill in using the side of my brush. I actually want it to be a little bit oranger. So I might just add some orange to that brown. Like that. And these are the bottoms of the acorn. The top, the little caps, I will do a dark brown. I left some white space in here again, okay. Um, Let's pick up some of that brown, which this is like a burnt sienna. It's a pretty dark brown. And I'm going to do this. Now making sure, see, I, I'm 
going faster because I'm filming. But really, when you're doing these, you know, take a moment and let them dry because this could turn into a hot mess real quick. Leaving a lot of white space for that cap. I'm just going in a little bit for some of these veins here in our oak leaf. Just adding in a few of those. There we go. So that's pretty much it. Um, I obviously touched in what I can do with that. If that really bothers me is just pick up some water, get those wet. Number one, don't panic or freak out. And start picking them up. Now, sometimes because of the different colors, they might be a little bit harder. So I'll use my brush. You can also buy little, I probably have one, scrubbers. And um, kind of scrub those out. They don't bother me so much. And they're kind of dry now, so they're a little bit harder to pick up. But there you go. I think that's really pretty and fun. And if you uh, go back to the, the tutorial I shared with um, drawing these fun leaves, I think that could be really fun. And then I used the tutorial for these little guys that I think are so cute and um, really have fun with this and play. I might go in once I hang up and add in a few more little darker values and things, but if you see, I've got light values, darker values, so go back to this um, value chart you did in the beginning, and you've got your dark, mid, and light values, and just hold it up there. So I've got some dark values, middle and light values here. And that's what you want in your painting to really create this depth and interest. And then for the most part today, the brushes that I used were that eight velvet touch round and this 12 um, round, which is a heritage, which I'm really enjoying. So I will link everything for you. I will make this a little tutorial kit for $5 if you'd like to purchase that and download it. Um, I will include the colors I used listed, um, the drawing, and um, a picture of the end piece that you could kind of look at. I would have liked that in my classes. And that's about it. All right, everybody, have fun with this. And we will continue with this fall theme. I'll see you all later. Bye.